I don't have a ton of faults of the way he's managed the team between the white lines and during you know the first 75 76 games of the year my criticism is more on the way he interacts with the media and the fans in his post-game press conferences that we've discussed wildly on john and jim and i know we'll discuss here today i'm sure as well yeah with shill and so to give him like props it's the in-game stuff that i i i like mike Schilt and Mm -hmm. I feel like I like him as the manager of this team when he's not talking to the media. Is it fair that maybe the fan base, they want Bob Melvin talking to the media, Padres manager, and they want Mike Schilt, Padres manager, in the other areas, right? Like, they're to get, he's together, connected with A.J. Preller, but fans want something else that they're not getting in these post-game scrum, these comments from Mike Schilt, which is not everything, by the way, but they're comments, and it's good talking points, obviously. Yeah, I don't. It's a fair question. I mean, um, I, I don't know if, you know, Bob Melvin post game was something special or unique. I thought he was fair and honest, you know. I, right. The truthfully, to be honest with you, Ben, and you've heard me say this, I mean, the truth is I actually prefer Mike Schilt as someone that covers the team because it gives us something to talk about. I mean, and I've said this a lot, like, I don't think he's playing 4D chess, but if he is, I give him credit because he's deflecting a lot of the attention away from his team and towards himself based on some of the things he says like last night they lose 9-2 in Philadelphia it's one of their more frustrating you know out of the game essentially all nine inning performances of the season yet he's saying we had a virtual highlight reel defensively in the game like things like yeah. that aren't typically said by managers he has said it repeatedly he's quote unquote gotten away with it I mean I don't know how you really hold a manager accountable for some of the things that he says to the media but again I think he's deflected attention away from his team and some of their deficiencies some of their poor play and put it solely like on himself i don't know if he's done it with intent or not but that might actually be a good quality for this team um so we'll see how that plays out but some of the things he says post game is perplexing does that add up to additional losses or fewer wins probably not but again for people that are really on top of it that are following this day in and day out like your viewers and me and you are doing it's it's a little odd the way he communicates with the media and in turn he communicates with Padres fans yeah and what do we want we just want someone to be honest and and he is being honest with some things but I think what pisses people off and I know Jim is definitely one of those is hmm. how he gets into the positives in a nine to two loss last night and he's praising the effort of Manny Machado and by the way it was also like you said last night it's actually kind of like a backhand compliment to Manny and kind of calling out Manny in the most Mike Schilt way that he possibly can when he's talking about effort level and that's appropriate. We're all under question. Just he's and he's referencing yep. Manny there. Um, but this is a guy that has showed up with an ailment that's real, blah, blah, blah. And he's gone out there and played. So he's praising him at the same time. But what we don't want to hear after a bad loss and you've had eight straight road losses is, you you take accountability like let's be fair he did do that at times yesterday and in the past he has an alibi he loves using that word mm. but then he uses the word but after that and then goes into a bunch of positives and talks for three minutes when it was just talking about your concern level and he answered the question he said no long term but then he went into all these positives when you just got blown out by the Phillies and we just don't want to hear that no, I, I completely agree. I think it is a disservice. I mean, if I'm being entirely truthful, which is what I do and try to do as often as possible when discussing, you know, with Padres fans, and we do it so often that there's no other way to do it, but to be forthright, try to be unbiased with it and truthful, he's doing a disservice to a great fan base. I said last night, maybe get away with this in Oakland because nobody cares or Miami or Tampa to some extent, just based on the way the teams are covered or cities that have NFL teams, and all of a sudden you lose track of your major league baseball team in the summer or a team isn't playing well. But day in and day out, and you know Ben as well as anyone because you're there more often than not, there's 40,000 people there when they're playing the Oakland A's. That's mm -hmm. incredibly impressive. They're drawing the same number of fans as the Philadelphia Phillies. The Phillies are night and day. I mean, these two franchises right now are night and day difference in terms of where Philadelphia is and where San Diego is, yet the Padres are drawing the same way as the Phillies. And I don't know how this would be portrayed in Philadelphia, New York, Boston, Los Angeles, San Francisco, elsewhere, but I know that it wouldn't go over well, and I don't think it's going over well here either. I just think that Padres fans deserve more. They've put up with so much. They've been so supportive beyond 
um, the way that most major league teams would be supported in most markets. And I just feel like Mike Schilt owes them more than what he is giving them. And I almost feel like he's trying to pull a fast one on people that you can't do to a knowledgeable, educated fan base. Padres fans aren't stupid. They're aware. They're watching and listening and consuming content day in and day out. Let's just be a little more honest with fans. And I think ultimately maybe it goes a longer way, but that's it's not going to be who he is, at least not in 2024. Right. And you're right. We can keep talking about this, but like, I'm not going to be super surprised with really anything that Mike Schultz says the rest of this season because we know who he is and we know he's going to be pro player. He's not going to do what some fans may want him to do. And that's just what it's going to be. And the good thing is at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter that much. What matters is his in-game management. That's what, and is he going to lose the clubhouse and all mm -hmm. that? Like that's what matters, not what he says post game, but yeah, last night, was interesting. I mean, he says first game that's gotten away from them, which is wrong. Uh, Padres will make the postseason. We'll see. Yeah, defense, like he said, virtual highlight reel. Um, again, doesn't want Manny's effort to go unnoticed, which him bringing that up, again, like it's isn't that a little bit concerning too? Because why do you have to bring up, uh, I want to bring up Manny's effort, but why does that have to be brought up? He is the captain of this team. He's getting paid $350 million in this second contract that he's gotten from the Padres. Sure, he's playing hurt, and I love that he has that and he feels like he needs to be in the lineup every day and all that, but that's not something that you should have to go out of your way to, hey, I want to make sure this doesn't go unnoticed in a blowout loss. Manny Machado and his teammates, and Jim said this last night, and he's spot on, should fall out of bed with great effort. I mean, this is professional mm -hmm. sports. Now, again, if you're not 100%, it is reasonable. Manny Machado hasn't been 100%. But how do you explain Friday's quasi-jog down to first base and blowing bubbles and then being in the field the next day and then him actually hustling just days later mm -hmm. and actually sprinting multiple times? You're telling me he was unable to jog on a Friday and can play in the field on a Saturday and then can sprint on a Monday? Something is off there. And to your point, and you know, Jim talks about this, like, why are we giving out some type of participation trophy or calling out effort for someone that is like has a trajectory of a Hall of Fame career? Like he should be better than what he is showing Padres fans inherently. Like we shouldn't be taking, we shouldn't be calling him out for hustling on a ball that he ultimately grounded into a double play on. And this guy's got way higher expectations than that. If I'm Manny Machado, and I don't think he really cares truthfully, but if I was Manny, and I'm watching that back, and I'm hearing that back, I don't want to be treated like a toddler. You don't need to treat me like that. Now, he's polarizing, and he's brash. I'm talking about Manny Machado. And he goes about things uniquely. And to some extent, I, I enjoy it, and I, I'm comfortable with it, and I like his honesty and his transparency, Manny Machado, even if it rubs people the wrong way. But he doesn't need to be treated like um, everyone else has kid gloves on around him. Like Mike Schilt should not be treating him – like, like he's some you know 19-year-old Rule 5 pick, and we should be congratulating him for effort or some random performance. Manny Machado, the bar and the threshold should be high for all 162 games. If, now, there's examples where, again, if you're not healthy and you have to overcome some adversity, that's reasonable. But we're a half season in Ben. He's hitting under 250. His OPS is under 700. Players on his team and around baseball are running circles around Manny Machado's performance. It's a performance-based business. He's not living up to expectations. He's accountable for it, plain and simple.